Welcome everyone. This is the first episode of Closet Confessions and extremely excited today to have one of our favorite designers, Masaba Gupta with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> We're excited to chat. Thank you. So I was, you know, reading a little bit about your journey and I know that fashion sort of serendipitously happened to you. Yes. So do you want to <laughs> tell us a little bit about kind of how that path has emerged? It's a long story, but I'll make it nice and short. Um, well, I was one of those confused teenagers and I really had too many things that I thought I was good at. But uh, I was studying music for a long time and I actually went over to London to study music. And um, then I came back there because I was lonely, you know how it is. Uh, missing home, missing my family and uh, I chanced to on fashion school. And from there on it was just uh, no looking back. I, I hated fashion school because it wasn't something I was used to. Uh, and you know the thing with fashion is people perceive it to be a very easy profession but even studying fashion is actually very hard and um, a lot of young girls ask me this and I'd keep telling them that it's a very rigorous course you know so um, the next thing I knew I was 19 and I started my own label a uh, very brave move but uh, it was fun because I had my family and friends backing me and um, next thing I was at fashion week and now I'm here with you. So I feel like, you know, as entrepreneurs, one of the stories that often doesn't get told is about sort of the lows. Yeah. And so for our audience, if you can maybe <laughs> share one of the low points um, and how, how you've kind of emerged from that. I think uh, there's actually an outfit here as well, which I'll talk about later, but um, it was 2014, I think, that we did this collection, which was just the chili print um, which people thought was a carrot by the way, but it's actually a chili <laughs> and um, I remember we did fashion week and this big show and everything and I loved the collection as I always do but um, it was a disaster on the retail scene so stores didn't really take to it, all the MBOs kind of rejected it and we were stuck with all the stock and a very very demotivated design team and demotivated me as well. I think it was a good two years that it set us back in, in just revenue and just in you know brand recognition and things like that. And uh, we really had to find a new design language then and I feel like every brand has a boiling point mm -hmm. um, and I feel like every brand once in a while has to shed its skin and really kind of reinvent and do things differently. I really believe in that, especially if you do print like I do because it gets exhausted very fast. Yeah. Um, so that's when we did a whole new festive line and that's where you saw the gold foil print as a new design language started then and we can breathe again is what I said. Um, so shifting gears a bit, I think a lot of you might have seen Masaba's incredible social media campaigns. Mm -hmm. So two of my favourites and I'm, you know, I think they're general campaigns which is an extent to social have right. been your most recent one where you did a shoot of your outfits in a parlour. Yes. <laughs> so that's tell right. us about that. How did you even think of something like that? Because it's it's really out there. So you know those uh, barber shops in really small towns. I think that there's they have so much character. I feel like um, so what really bothers me is if I have to shoot my clothes on a plain backdrop, I would die. You know, I yeah. feel like that's just the most boring way of because we're a very I mean we're a brand that talks about fantasy and you know we're very kind of out there. We're a little whimsical. Mm. So um, these barber shops are amazing because they're so cluttered, they're so dirty and they're so like full of these little knickknacks that you find and we love that. So I tried, it was very hard to find one in Bombay by the way. Uh, it was literally very small and we got all these girls beautifully dressed in like jewels and the, the festive wear and the whole theme was that they're essentially getting ready for a wedding party. And I feel like a lot of these things are kind of, you know, when you're getting married and things like that. A lot of this behind the scenes stuff mm. is really interesting for people to see. Because no one wants to see beautiful brides in a palace all the time. They want to see what's, what goes on behind the scenes. And I think that was the idea behind that campaign. Yeah. yeah. Who's been your role model? Uh, both from a design perspective, but then also from just a personal life perspective. I think... Um, I can't say my mom, it's been too many times I've said it. But definitely her, she makes light of very, very awkward situations which I've taken from her. And professionally, she was someone who always added a little bit of her personality to the clothes she bought. She never wore clothes as they were, you know. So she'd buy things, she'd cut them up and sew them together. 
and just have these very unusual combinations. So I think a lot of my aesthetic comes from her. But I understood the sari a lot from her. Uh, the fluidity of it and the understanding of it came from her. So I think she's been a huge source of inspiration both for me and the brand. Thank you so much, Ms. Alba, Thank for you. coming and chatting with all of us. It Thank was honestly you. our privilege and honor to have you Same on. Same here. It was so nice. Our new show. It was so Thank nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.